Hey YouTube, thought we'd do some block work today and show y'all how to how to do a little bit of that. This is not going to be a, an exact how-to because I don't really know how to. I just know how to do it the way I do it. So right there is where we're going to be starting. Now probably if you uh, take more than just a couple of days to do your block, you're going to have a bunch of mud and muck down in your in your hole there. You'll have to clean that out. Basically what you need to do or have in order to lay blocks is obviously the blocks. And then you'll need something to mix the mortar in. I just use this $6 tub that I got from Dollar General. The good thing about it is you can just turn it upside down when you're done and you don't really have to wash it out you just turn it upside down and then next day or two when you come back just hit the sides of it and the bottom and all the dry stuff pretty much just falls out and then I use the lid as kind of a I don't know what you would call it a mortar board or whatever you just put the mortar on there to to make it a little easier to use And then obviously you'll need the mortar. There's a couple ways to go about this. I use the Quickcrete Pro Finish. The um, it's a high strength structural mortar. I think it's about five dollars at. I got it at Lowe's. Um, you can buy. Uh, I think it's type N or something mortar and then go and um, get sand and mix it yourself but you know for me there's not anywhere within 60 miles of here where you can buy sand in bulk like that so I mean it'd be a lot more expensive to have all that trucked in I figured it out and uh, using it using the pre bag stuff that you just add water to is about 60 cents per 80 pounds cheaper for me it might not be for you but it is for me and then you'll need a a good four foot level you'll need a, a smaller say a 12 inch level and then I just use a 20 ounce hammer and a um, concrete chisel just in case you need to cut a block or have some dried mortar you need to chip off or something like that and then you just need a trowel this is a, an 11 inch trowel and it works pretty good so basically that's about all you need and then you need some water since I'm out here in the woods with no electricity and things I I just fill up a couple of milk jugs of water and mix with that so one bag will lay about 12 blocks and the bag says to not add more than 7 quarts which is a gallon and 3 quarter so I usually add about a gallon and a half and then just add a little bit at a time until I get the consistency I want and that's about all you need and a little bit of knowledge oh and you need a you need some string this is just nylon string that I got from Lowe's. I think it come in a 450 foot roll for like seven dollars or something. But you can use any kind of string you want. I just like this little nylon string because you can stretch it real tight. And it holds up pretty good so we probably will we'll start there and then there's that first rebar. We'll probably finish Oh, maybe about, we might get to this next rebar. Because I've got two bags of mortar. And that, that pretty much takes me, you know, three quarters of the day or so. It it takes a while. But that's it. Let's get started. I'm going to mix the mortar up and then uh, we'll get to it.
Okay, well we got her mixed up. How you can tell if you're at the right consistency is you just kind of mix it around a little bit. Get you a scoop out. And then you just flick it like that. And it should stick at least for a moment to the trowel. Now this is a little bit drier than what a lot of professionals have it at, but I find it easier to keep it a little drier in the bucket and then when I transfer some to the board, maybe mix a little bit of water in or something like that. But we'll get to, we'll get started laying some block here. Okay. I apologize if the video is not quite as good as maybe what it has been. My tripod tipped over and and broke, so I'm having to prop it up the best I can. So just bear with me a little bit here. Get a little bit of mortar on my board here. Now what I like to do is kind of stretch it down into strips, maybe about an inch by an inch or so, something like that. I'm trying to figure out how to do this and stay out of the way of the camera. Lay your mortar out. Right where your block's going to go. I find with this 11 inch mortar or 11 inch trowel that two trowel links kind of like like that is just right for a block now when you buy these blocks they say they're 8 by 8 by 16 they're just slightly undersized from that uh, they already the 8 by 8 by 16 allows for a 3 8 mortar joint already that's already figured in Alright, now once you got that, another thing I'll mention is the uh, the corner blocks. They come uh, for every, uh, every third block is going to be a corner block on your pallet. So uh, you're going to want to just use the corner blocks right in the wall and stuff with the other ones. Or, you know, don't be picking through it and only using the line blocks because you'll end up with a mess. Then I usually take a piece, something about like that. Also with these blocks, the, the fatter middle section goes up. always kind of pat it down just a little bit don't smash it down too much but I pat it down a little bit just so it won't fall off when you go to tip the block down then I just kind of bring it up against the, the block before it line it up and just kind of set it down and then 
run my string up along the side of it. Make sure I'm within, a, within where I need to be. And then I'll just use this little this little little red level just to kind of see where I'm at. And you just kind of tap it down into place. good right there that's it for that block
Okay. Well, I'm just going to go to lay in these blocks and film what I can. Kind of stinks not having the tripod. But, uh, I'm just going to film this the way I can and piece it together. And you guys let me know if you'd, if you'd like just the normal speed and some dialogue or, uh, you know, I get a little long-winded sometimes, maybe, maybe you know, eight times speed with some funny little music behind it or something, you know, speed it up. Just let me know what you want to see, you know. If you want to hear my philosophies, then I can surely accommodate that. If you'd rather not hear it, well, that's fine, too. But I'm out here by myself, so I kind of find ways to entertain myself. Now, like I said before, I've, ne I've never done this before. Um, I mean, I've done, you know couple hundred blocks now but I'm a little bit slow at it still so just bear with me if this takes a while You want to make sure you don't have any big rocks or anything in it. Now this top block is normally where your four foot level comes into play, but I've got the camera propped up across the, the block so I can't really use that.
Poi fit. Alrighty, well, I think that's enough to give you an idea of, of what's going on here. So I'll just keep going and then I'll do a little video when I get done today. Okay, well, we got done with with what we were going to do today, so... We're getting there. I'd say I'm about two-fifths of the way done. Um, not quite halfway. It shouldn't be too much longer. I'm just hoping that that I can get this done and not have to wait till spring to finish it because the weather's turning kind of bad and I'm having not very many days that the nighttime temperatures are above freezing. So, uh, this is it for today, though. We're, we're moving along. We're getting there, chipping away at it. Uh, this is kind of, you know, wh wh how it goes when you're doing it by yourself. You know, I don't have any help out here. I'm just doing it by myself, a little bit at a time, like the little engine that could, you know, chugging along. We'll get there eventually. Thought maybe I'd go over the layout with you. I don't know if that'd be interesting or not, but here we go. This right here, across here, is going to be the front. There's a gravel road right over there, just maybe 30 feet. In between, say, that tree and that tree. Right in there, there's a gravel road. So, this is going to be the front. Up here in the front corner is going to be the master bedroom. And I th I'm not sure, but I think it, it was going to be 12 foot by 14 foot. And then here in the middle, there's going to be a, a six foot by six foot mud room. And then the central hallway is going to run the length of the house right off of that mud room. And then this back corner is going to be a bathroom. And I think it's going to be 10 foot by 12 foot. And then a bedroom 10 foot by 12 foot. And another bedroom 10 foot by 12 foot. Another bedroom 10 foot by 12 foot. And then over here, there's going to be a laundry room slash pantry that's going to be about 10 feet or 12 feet long and about 8 feet wide. And then, of course, the, the three-foot hallway. And then the kitchen and dining room are, is going to be about 26 feet long altogether and I think 14 feet wide. And then there's going to be the living room, which I think is going to be... 14 by 14 and then in between the living room and master bedroom is going to be a five foot wide by 14 feet long office so it's going to be four bedroom and then the bathroom back here in the corner and then the laundry room down there at that corner is going to have a sink and a toilet. So four bedroom, one and a half bathroom, plus an office and kitchen and dining room. And it's it should be right at 1,800 square feet. And then right about the very middle of the house, I'll put the, the wood heat stove in the, uh, in the living room. And then the living room will basically be open to the, uh, to the dining room. And then it'll be open to the hallway with the bedrooms right, just right across from the uh, from the living room. The doors as close to the to the wood stove as as possible, and that should that should heat the house. Uh, the stove I'm gonna get is uh, I think it's U.S. Stove Company or something like. It's one of the ones with the uh, the glass door in the front, and uh, it's supposed to be an efficient model. With the how it you know reburns the the wood gas and all that stuff, but uh, it says it'll it'll heat 2,000 square feet. So I'm gonna insulate really well. I'm gonna insulate the floor, the floor, the ceiling, the walls, and everything. So some people don't insulate the floor, but I'm going to. The house we live in now is about 80 years old, and it's you know it's been remodeled and everything, but the floor is not insulated. And it's it. There's a cold draft about the the bottom foot, about a foot from the floor, up from the floor down to the floor, 
is is just cold so we'll insulate real well and then that wood stove that's 200 square feet oversized should should do us pretty good um but yeah i thought i'd maybe walk you through it there real quick i don't know if that's interesting or not but but there it is and then my uh electric and water is going to come in right over here and I'll just turn one of the blocks in the towards the bottom sideways like I did over there right there for the sewer and uh, anyway I got a little pond going right here right now but that's what happens when you dig a hole in Missouri you know you get all that clay it'll hold water but uh, coming from the well there my water will come down and come in there and then go to the utility room and then my electric will come in the same trench obviously not right on top the water pipe but in the same trench and it'll run to the utility room also but yeah that's what we got going on so yeah you can see that gravel road there now well I guess that's about it for now Till next time.